Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering any question or challenge you have related to electrical and life safety. And we're going to use NFPA Link to do it. Easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards. Today, we've been asked to cover the important points of equipotential bonding of swimming pools using the 2020 National Electrical Code. Let's get started. So from the desktop and link, I'm going to navigate to the 2020 National Electrical Code and then make my way to Article 680, which covers swimming pool electrical installations. Now, Article 680 is broke down into several parts. Part two is what we're gonna to navigate to, which is for permanent installed pools or permanently installed pools. And within that, Section 68026 covers equipotential bonding. So first we want to look at 68026A, and that tells us what equipotential bonding is supposed to do. So equipotential bonding required by this section shall be installed to reduce voltage gradients in the pool area. And that's important to keep in mind. If we go to the enhanced content that we have in here, uh, it gives us a little more insight. So the function of an equipotential bonding differs from the primary function of bonding to meet the requirements of Article 250. So when we talk electrical and we talk bonding, there's requirements within Article 250 around bonding electrical components and things of that nature. But this is different. Providing a path for the ground fault current is not the function of the equipotential bonding grid and associated bonding conductors. The only function of the number eight conductor, which we'll get to here in a minute, required by 68026B is equipotential bonding to eliminate the voltage gradient in the pool area. So that's the purpose of what we're going to do here. Now, if we look at part B, it tells us what we're going to need to bond. So 68026B1 through B7 shall be bonded together using solid copper conductors, insulated, covered, or bare, so it has to be solid, it can't be stranded, and then it cannot be smaller than number eight, AWG. So that's the base rule to this. It has to be a solid conductor, copper, and it has to be at least size eight AWG in size. And then we look at the breakdown beneath B, and it gives us the different components that need to be uh, bonded. So we have the conductive pool shells that are in place, perimeter surfaces, so when we look at um, sidewalks, things around the pool that would have uh, reinforcing steel, such as rebar, things of that nature in it. Uh, those have to be bonded. Uh, metallic components of the pool, underwater lighting, if there's a metal forming shell to those underwater lights, those have to be bonded as well. Uh, metal fittings have to be bonded. Electrical equipment that's associated with the pool water circulating system, including pump motors and metal parts of the equipment associated with pool covers, including electric motors, shall be bonded. And fixed metal parts also have to be bonded. Okay, so when we look at fixed metal parts, this is going to be things like metal piping, metal awnings, metal fences that may be within the perimeter of the pool, uh, things of that nature. And then part C is required to have the pool water itself bonded, but in a lot of cases, this happens naturally. So if we look at the enhanced content here, it gives us an example if we have bonded items such as ladders, uh, rails, underwater luminaires, things of that nature that are metal already, so they have that conductive uh, element to it, you know, you can go ahead and, and utilize those and you don't have to actually bond the pool water itself. If there's a scenario where those aren't in place and aren't available, then the pool water itself would have to be bonded and there's a method in which we can do that. And we can jump over into uh, NFP direct, direct to do that. So if we jump over to direct, we've got a few different options here, what we can go into, but we know we're dealing with swimming pools. So we're just gonna jump down into um, pools and hot tubs here. And we can see we've got a overall permanent pool installation that's been done. But if we go down a little bit further in that, there's a sub situation for pool equipotential bonding. So with this, now we can see these hot spots as we have them numbered here, cover some of those areas that we were just looking at, some of the components that we said need to be bonded. Um, so if we look at those, the metal fittings and fixed parts, 
we jump into hotspot one. This gives us a look at the code sections that would apply there. And then also how you would see that connection made in many cases. Now it has to be a listed uh, fastener, you know, to be able to do that. Uh, it has to be made for the application, but this is a, an example of what you may see to uh, bond. In this case, it appears to be a metal pole. If we um, go back into, and I'm gonna just jump in the equipotential bonding piece here. Um, if we go into the uh, perimeter surface, conductive pool shell, there's many of those. We talked about pool water as well. So here's one with pool water so you can see how that application would look if we're going to bond the pool water because we don't have those other metal rails, handrails and whatnot uh, that would apply in those cases. So in this case, there's a, a component that would sit at the bottom of the filter um, and would permit that the nine square inches that are required of area, surface area, would be bonded to, so that metal. So the pool water would come down into this uh, you know, filter trap. And at the bottom there, you can see this metal plate that appears to be maybe a, a four by three or something of that nature, um, at least covering those nine square inches. And then it has uh, the number eight solid conductor that's bonded to it. So this just gives us a little insight, um, you know, what we need to do for the, the potential bonding so we can visually see it. Um, uh, NFPA directs a great method of doing that. So we hope this answered a lot of your questions today about equipotential bonding of swimming pools. Be sure to visit nfpa.org front slash link and give link a try if you haven't already. As you just saw, link truly is a window to productivity.